Welcome to Lessons in Life and Love with Rihanna Milne, where we show you how to have the positive mindset for success in all life areas so you can grow beyond difficult transitions and evolve from those challenging moments that may have influenced your past but will not define your future. It's time to have the life you desire and the love you deserve as we teach you the exact skills needed to attract and keep a lasting, emotionally healthy and conscious relationship. Now, please welcome your host, certified life dating and relationship coach, trauma professional, and best-selling author, Rihanna Milne. Hi, everyone. Welcome to show 24 of Lessons in Life and Love. It's Love Month. I hope you're all super excited and have some wonderful plans for the one that you love and care for. It's really, really important. This is my favorite month of the year because I celebrate love all month. (laughs) I was just out in L.A. visiting my grandson who just turned one and my beautiful daughter, Alexi Panos, and her husband, Preston Davis. And there's a lot of love in that room, about 100 people at the party. So it's great. I mean, there's love always, friendship love, family love, date love, partner love. So we are just celebrating love all around. I'm Coach Rihanna Milne, and I'm known as a life and love transformation expert. And I'm on a mission to change the way the world loves. I hope you, my listeners, my angels of love and my love transform will help me spread the word on how to have conscious, loving, and respectful relationships. Tonight's topic, it's a gift for you uh, for Love Week, and you're going to love this beautiful woman. Her name is Katia Lozell. She's a real expert. I'll give her bio in a little bit, but she's going to cover what the kiss reveals about your relationship, how to tell if someone wants to kiss you, kissing turn-ons and turn-offs, body language of attraction, top reasons we misread body language signals in dating and partnerships and more. And this is a show I really hope you call in for and give her your problems, your issues, and let two minds give you some answers. (laughs) The number to call in, it's free, is 866-451-1451. You can ask any question about tonight's topic or any other topics you've heard in Lessons in Life and Love or just something you're struggling with. And if you hear something and you want to meet with me personally about your own concerns, then do go ahead and apply for a free Life and Love Transformation Discovery Session just by going to my website, rihannamilne.com, and tell me your story. You can listen to all the past podcast on my podcast website, lessonsinlifeandlove.com to get the education that builds your knowledge in both life and love skills. You can also now listen on Alexa under the skill set of lifestyles on Spotify, iTunes, Stitchers, iHeartRadio, Google Music, and your favorite other podcast apps. And if you hear something you know will benefit a friend or a loved one, please be an angel of love and share the show link and leave a comment and a five-star rating. Today's show is being brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audio book with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com forward slash Rihanna and browse the unmatched selection of audio programs. Download a free title and start listening today. It's that easy. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash Rihanna. Just a few other announcements. I want to make sure that you know today and tomorrow is the last couple of days to sign up for the Singles Life and Love Transformation Program that I do. It's a group program and it's a loving based family like the family you might not have had to help you get the edge in dating and get over any past love trauma or childhood trauma you might have experienced. The program is called Dating to Mating. If you're interested, just email me at rihannamilne at gmail.com directly and I will make sure you have the class invitation. We are going to feature your love topics all month and I am very excited to bring you Katia tonight. Next week we're going to go into learning to love unconditionally and the relationship rules of success. We are going to try doing all kinds of neat things and I'm here to answer your questions. That's the most important thing that you need to know. Let's talk about 
about the kiss before Katya gets here. For me, it's really the first sign and symbol that you care for someone. There's the quick friendship kiss, the first date when you're just starting to get to know someone. And the more passionate kiss is when you're really in love with someone. And it will be beautifully amazing to feel that from someone that you care about and can kind of tell from the kiss if people are panicking, if something is going wrong, if they're not quite into you. It all comes up and it, you can tell from the kiss, it's really quite interesting. Hi, Katia, you're with us. Hello, I'm so sorry about that technical hitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know that can happen at any time, but I'm so glad that you were able to make it. I'm like, okay, what else can I tell her to do coming from Australia? Does she need to go through WhatsApp. It's really difficult going you're live trying to figure out all the bells and whistles, but we got you on here and we we'll, might as well get started. Welcome. Thank you. And I'm so glad you took some time out for us all tonight on Valentine's week to chat with my people and tell them all the things that you want to say about the kiss. And I want to tell them all about you. So I'm going to read this phenomenal bio and I want to read most of it because you are so acclaimed and so well known in your country and really getting out there in ours as well. And I had the pleasure of meeting Katia and talking with her at the International iDate Conference last week, which was the online dating conference where I shared with a lot of the people there about the childhood traumas as well as narcissism, sociopathy, psychopathy, and how to protect people more so online and through dating matchmakers. And she was in the room. She goes, I want to film you. And she is going to be doing some films on me through her program. And I said, well, I need to do you on my radio shows. Here we are. Okay, so let me read the bio here. Katia Lazelle is an international recognized dating relationship and body language expert and CEO of Love Destination. She's a host of French Kiss, the art and science of kissing, which airs July 2019 and author of How to Get the Man or Woman You Want and has conducted widely published five year global study into dating and mating patterns. Now, my clients know I'm all about research and they are also now learning the importance of getting their facts from research. So that's another reason I was excited to have you on. So Katia has also <laughs> produced a how-to series on kissing that received over 12 million views on YouTube alone. Her broad knowledge on relationships and nonverbal communications has made Katia a sought-after media commentator, brand spokesperson, and host. She's interviewed over a thousand times by media outlets worldwide on TV, radio, and in print. And she's been in over 50 of the top shelf magazines nationally and internationally, including Cosmo, Clio, Marie Claire, Good Health, Medicine, Women's Day. She's an international speaker and trainer. Caddy has worked with thousands of singles and couples and is passionate about helping people to understand and improve their relationships and body language. And this is why she founded Love Destination, a global digital video on demand network for everything love, dating, and relationships with content that empowers, educates, and entertains. And will be launched this month and it is dubbed the Netflix for everything about love. Love Destinations allows viewers to stream expert guided video courses, how to's, lifestyle shows, documentaries, films, and expert resources on everything love, dating, and relationships. So welcome Katia and there's even more. <laughs> I could be going well, all night thank girl. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's a very long bio. You should have read it out. But I just wanted to say how thrilled we are at the Love Destination to actually be sharing. I mean, you were amazing, and we're very thrilled to be sharing your clips and, you. and including you in some of our documentaries as well. Because I think that your tips are well potentially life changing for people, and there's not enough of that information out there, I don't think. And we're very passionate and thrilled to be sharing you with the world. So thank you very much, and thank you for having I'm me. So thrilled show. I'm going to be a part of it, Katia. I can't even tell you. She's there. Let me film you for two minutes. And we ended up filming for two and a half hours. I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't bring a change of clothes or my hair and makeup. I'm usually coming totally prepared when I do television or filming video, but it was kind of impromptu, but it was awesome. I'm so excited to see how that comes out and when it does and to continue working with you and helping our people around the globe to learn as much as we can teach them to have emotionally healthy, evolved and conscious love. It's 
It's very exciting. Going into the first question. Oh, fine. <laughs> okay. Question <laughs> I want to ask for my listeners is what the kiss really reveals. Is it about the person or the relationship or how they feel? Tell us about that. Well, this is a really interesting thing. And I think that a lot of people, the kiss, are in, in my opinion, and perhaps I'm biased, is one of our most powerful forms of nonverbal communication. It reveals a lot of information, not only about your compatibility, about how your partner feels towards you, so the level of emotional and physical intimacy in your relationship, but also when you're out there dating in terms of mate selection, it reveals information about your genetic compatibility, about the person that you're kissing, their overall health, the health of their gums, even, even the levels of stress and anxiety that they're going through. And so depending on which stage of the relationship you're at, whether you're dating, out there looking for love or in a relationship, it can actually reveal so much more. It's not just about kissing. It's not just about whether or not it feels good. Um, and it actually, particularly in long-term relationships, can really be instrumental in, in boosting relationship satisfaction and helping us bond. But unfortunately, as I'm sure a lot of people out there who are in long-term relationships will understand, it's one of the first things that goes. And when we're in a long-term relationship, you know, all of a sudden we're not kissing as much. Or those kisses did some research and they found that over 25% of people, long-term couples, were kissing less than once a week. And that's <laughs> really a shame that because that really brings the heart together. You know, a great kiss, you feel it all throughout your body. It's a great start of the turn on, right? So, you know, if they stop yeah, kissing absolutely. and they only do that back on the face. Yeah. Well, absolutely. And, you know, when we kiss, it helps us to to really, I mean, in terms of an arousal point of view, it helps to build arousal. It helps to aid with lubrication. And all of these are really important, particularly if you're in a long-term relationship and the passion is dwindling a little bit, then that can actually help. And also, you know, obviously when we kiss, it helps to release serotonin and dopamine, but it also includes all five of our senses. So I like to think of it really when we're busy, and when we're living a life where sometimes we don't to connect that often, it's probably the only time when you're sitting face to face, breathing each other in, not saying anything, but actually just allowing yourselves to connect, to separate, to, to hold eye contact, gaze, and to really breathe each other in. And really, that's something that we need to be doing more of, don't you agree? I do agree. I think in our hurry up world, people don't want to take the time. And that's one thing I'm always coaching. Make sure you go out and have a date twice a week, something more casual, something more formal, and really take the time and hold hands and walk and talk and don't bring up anything negative. This is the time just to dote on you and say why you think your partner is special and just really get into the the five senses of each other, right? The kiss, the touch, the smell. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, just on the kiss as well, I mean, you asked me what does a kiss reveal about your relationship and, you know, mm-hmm. the amount of, you can actually tell a lot about the amount of emotional and physical intimacy in your relationship from a kiss. So if you've obviously at the beginning of a relationship or if you're dating, we have a lot of hot and heavy kissing, if you like, you know, we have more saliva, more tongue, more passionate, I guess, the kiss, more French kissing. But as time right. goes on, often what happens is couples actually, the amount of open mouth kissing actually reduces and it's more closed kiss, hello, goodbye on the cheek. And research actually shows just like, you know, they they did this amazing study and they they asked couples just to increase their kissing a little bit. There was no prerequisite in terms of you need to kiss it, um, increase it by this much. But they found decreased levels of cortisol, the stress hormone cortisol, increased relationship satisfaction, and so and decreased conflict as well. So just increasing the amount of kissing a little bit can actually improve your relationship. But if you found that you are just kissing each other, you know, giving a little peck, or it's often a closed mouth kiss, then that can be an indication, not only that the physical intimacy is gone down but often the physical intimacy when that goes down it's often a reflection that something's happening with the emotional intimacy as well when resentment builds in a relationship right when 
we the partner annoys us or pisses us off when we don't have time for each other when there's this build up resentment or issues that we're not dealing with that then again affect physical intimacy so often they mirror each other not obviously at the beginning of the relationship yeah I, I totally agree I have some people when they're out dating with that I coach and they're like well I kissed him and he felt like he was scared and I said well maybe he yeah. was doesn't mean you don't give him another chance maybe he gets more comfortable yeah. I talk to other men and they're like oh it's all in the kiss they don't kiss well forget it I'm not interested it's like that first kiss it's either maker or breaker is there anything well, yeah. the research shows how good the first or second kiss is is yeah. how well the relationship will make out I'm just curious on that well not in terms of long term, so there were no longitudinal studies that looked at long term effects of kissing on a relationship. And if the first kiss was amazing, what happened years after? They should do that, right? Maybe that's why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe mm -hmm. the one to follow up. But they did do, um, Gordon, Professor Gordon Gallup, University of Albany, did research looking at first kisses being as deal breakers, basically. So if your first kiss is a bad kiss, then what does that mean for your relationship? The long term, right. or do you have a relationship, or is it deal over, you know, game over as soon as the first kiss? They actually found that 66% of women, 59% of men, actually not go on a second date, would not pursue a relationship if the first kiss was a bad kiss. Um, which I thought, and there, there are a lot of reasons for that because obviously, kissing can tell us a lot about obviously the person that we're kissing in terms of their genetic compatibility, as I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. I think also how relaxed they are with their sexuality and their yeah, sensuality. Exactly. I think it tells that too. But also, you know, the thing that we need to remember is that for a lot of us, when we're going in for that first kiss, it's a very nerve-wracking, yes, exciting, but a very nerve-wracking time. You know, if you, particularly if you have some emotional investment, if you like this person, if you think they're cute, if you think that potentially you might, what happens is when we're nervous, it doesn't do wonders for our kissing. Like firstly, what happens is obviously we become quite self-absorbed. So we're no longer letting the other person take the lead. We can tend to rush into things or go straight for a full passionate kiss when the other person might not be that. Really miss their signals or completely ignore them. Simply go into them because that's right. we have tunnel vision. We, so we are no longer right. able to read their body language. But also nerves drive up to our saliva. It dries up our saliva, it makes, which obviously makes that first kiss a little bit awkward. Yeah. What if they really like the person, but they're not a good kisser? I mean, what if they say, let me show you how I want to kiss you. And then you lay one <laughs> on them like you want to be kissed back. I yes. gotta tell you, I mean, over the years I've had to do that a couple of times because nobody told them how to do it properly. I'm just wondering if you've ever heard of that and if that's a good idea. Because, you know, everybody's absolutely. different. Everybody likes something different, yes, right? Absolutely. And this is the thing about kissing turn-offs. Kissing turn-offs and ki kissing turn-offs are quite complex because we like someone to kiss us the way that we like to be kissed, we, the way that right. we kiss others. So basically, that a kissing turn-on for one person is going to be a kissing turn-on and vice versa. So if you're into French kissing, you're not going to have a great kissing match with somebody who's a little bit awkward at the beginning or doesn't like that level or physical intimacy, you know, or doesn't right. really like touch. Really, I always think that absolutely everyone can be taught. I remember my first ever boyfriend and he kissed me and practically devoured my entire face. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, I this is what I'm finding. When, yeah, when I hear people complain, they say, oh, my God, it's usually the man kissing too hard or throwing their entire tongue into yes. your mouth. And it's like, ugh. And it's a turnoff for a woman that likes a much softer, lingering kiss, yes. right? Something softer Absolutely. and more sensuous. It tends to be the man, I think they think, oh, I'll show her I'm aggressive or I'm the man. It's not the way to kiss someone. I'm just wondering if you found that too, since you're the pro. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, look, and that kissing mismatches is very, very common, particularly with men. Because, and research actually shows that men and women, not only do we kiss for different reasons, but we're also pre-wired to have different kissing preferences. So research shows that at the beginning of a relationship or in the courtship dating stage, men prefer a hot and heavy, passionate kiss with lots of tongue and saliva. And the research says that potentially that's because when we kiss, there's a small amount of testosterone that's released. And, you know, our cheeks, the inside of our cheeks are quite permeable. And so uh -huh. that might then get mixed in with our blood. And over time, 
increase form of libido. Whereas the research found that for women, at the beginning of a relationship, they preferred less tongue and less saliva and more passion and tender and nurturing. But actually, right. over time, as as the relationship became more secure and it was more of a committed relationship, then there was less difference between men and women's preferences. So with a long-term partner, women liked, you know, the, a passionate kiss with tongue and saliva, but not at the beginning when you get to Right, <laughs> until there, they feel like yeah. they feel safe and they know that this might be her guy. Yes. Right, exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I think that, you know, if you're kissing somebody who is uh, about, and, you know, research also shows that how good a kisser you are, so your your kissability actually affects how attractive you're perceived. So people, oh. who, you know, you might not be that attractive, but if you're a good kisser, then actually you can turn their opinion of you around. And so I like that. Hope, Yes, absolutely. So do I. So there is hope if you if you feel that you know you're you potentially really like somebody. Um, you can you give some little tips later on how to be an amazing kisser. But if you can really follow their lead, and, and really it's all about taking it slow, building the anticipation, right. using all of your senses, and really connecting. Because as you said, and it's, it's so true, Rihanna. At the end of the day, you want to feel like love and you know, acknowledge and comfortable because i i want to know this one because i have a lot of people just starting to go out to date right after they had a really yes. toxic relationship or went through a really bad yes. divorce and they're on their first date and they're like how can you tell mm-hmm. if someone wants to kiss you what yes. are the rules that they should look for or the signs well, Yes. Well, first, I think the first key thing here is to know when somebody's actually interested in you. We often really misread nonverbal communication, particularly when we're nervous. I find it really difficult to interpret signs when we're thinking, oh my gosh, do they like me? Am I attractive enough? Oh my gosh, I'm not attractive enough. So the first three things are to look for just basic are they interested in me is looking for increases in proximity so are they getting closer to you are they putting you know their glass or their bag closer to you are they repositioning themselves are they moving their arm forward and resting at the middle of the table as an intention to basically let you know what they want to do next and increase in touch are they accidentally brushing past do you know just more self-touch because when we're attracted to somebody we get an increase in blood flow to our lips and our face become coming gorged with blood and it becomes more sensitive. And if we're thinking, oh my goodness, I'd love to kiss you, then again, we're bringing attention to our lips and what you might see is autoerotic touching. So you might notice that they start to gently or perhaps not so gently touch their lips or their face and that's a really good sign that they want to kiss you. Then we might see increases in eye contact and this look like that they might hold their gaze or, or you know, if they're feeling really nervous and not sure if you like them, you might, you know, you might get a darting glance where they look at you, then look away and look back or that you catch them looking at you and then they quickly look away or that they hold your gaze and sometimes you can feel as though your eyes are almost glued together. Now, an increase in eye contact actually releases phenylethylamine, so our natural love hormone, if you like, or love drug, if you call it, and that's actually going to boost attraction and make you feel, heighten the attraction between you. But if you aren't attracted to someone, just for those who perhaps there when they're when they're attracted to somebody can actually because it's released in fight or flight it can actually make us feel very uncomfortable as well so you do need to be careful with eye contact thing with body language is always to look for at least three to five signals simultaneously because i don't know about you but often what happens hold on we're going to go to a fast (laughs) break and then we're going to bring you back and i want you to also go into some of the kissing turn on and turn offs and give them a real good education all right we'll be right back (laughs) hold on everyone you're listening live to Coach Rihanna Milne and her wonderful, beautiful guest, Katia Lozelle on Bold Brave Media Global Network. Today's show is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audio book with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com forward slash Rihanna and browse the unmatched selection of audio programs 
Download a free title and start listening today. It's that easy. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash Rihanna and get started. Why Audible? Well, Audible content includes an unmatched selection of audiobooks, original audio shows, news, comedy, and more from the leading audiobook publishers, broadcasters, and entertainers. To download your free audiobook today, just go to audibletrial.com forward slash Rihanna and enjoy your free audiobook. We are back. This is Coach Rihanna Milne on Lessons in Life and Love, and we have our guest from across the pond, Katia LaSalle. What kissing <laughs> reveals about you and your relationship and how to tell if someone wants to kiss you. We're getting really deep into this information. It's great for both singles and couples. Okay, what do you want to go into next? Before we go into the next topic, I just wanted to brush. We, we touched briefly on how to know if they want to kiss you, but they more attraction tips specific to kissing there are a few signs that really give you the big tick in terms of knowing whether or not somebody wants to kiss you and again we're looking for three to five signals simultaneously because one signal on its own doesn't mean anything so the first one is that their jaw drops when we're actually attracted to somebody it blocks the signal between our brain and our jaw so that can cause our jaw to to drop and subconsciously and unconsciously so sometimes you'll notice in movies you'll often have people looking at each other longingly and you'll notice that their lips part and that's why so basically when we're attracted it causes our lip to part and so our mouth will be open so the next thing is is that they'll get dewy bedroom eyes now you know there are even songs on that. I don't know when I was growing up there was that song I don't know if you had it here you know there's bedroom <laughs> eyes there was bedroom yes. eyes <laughs> And, and that's because when we're attracted again, and, and particularly when we're about to go in for a big kiss, it can stimulate the parasympathetic and the rest and digest system, right? So basically, we go into this relaxed day right before a kiss. And then we'll notice yes. some actual facial differences. You'll notice that they'll, you know, people, I mean, some people just naturally have those sort of bedroom eyes, but even people who weren't born with those those come hither eyes can have this dewy quality in their eyes. And that's because like when we're very relaxed, it's that same sort of look in their eye and that's because of the rest and digest system. What you'll notice also is that they might again start touching their lips and looking at your lips. And that's a sign that, yes, obviously perhaps the blood is engorged and their, their, their lips are feeling more sensitive. And it's an intention it's telling you that this that they would like to kiss you and kissing you is, is what's on their mind. You might also notice that they reposition themselves. So when somebody wants to kiss you, two things happen. One is a subconscious thing in that the orientating reflex kicks in. Now, you may or may not have noticed, and I'm sure, I mean, you would have seen this a lot, Rihanna, that when watching people who, perhaps even couples or people who are dating, when people mm -hmm. are really attracted to each other, they tend to lean in. It's almost as if their torso is pulling them in like a puppet, right, on the road? Yes, and yes. And when, when somebody approaches you, you, you don't particularly like or feel uncomfortable. It's almost like you're doing a backward bend and <laughs> trying to get out of the way. Well, that's a subconscious reaction. That's the orientating reflex that kicks in. And basically, whether we like it or not, it draws us also in towards people we like and away from people we don't like. And so what you might notice if you're flirting with somebody is that they will just, their torso will be moving closer and closer and closer and closer. Uh -huh. Until sometimes it's almost as if your lips, you know, you just were apart. And this is a subconscious thing and it's a really good indication of a, interest because we do it obviously even when we're just interested in someone from a platonic point of view. But if we have that combined with those other signals that I mentioned, then that's a really good, powerful tick that they want to get up close and personal. They want to kiss you. Yeah. What if one person is interested and one is not? If the one person is trying to kiss romantically and the other one is like <laughs> nervous or just wants to keep it on a friendship level, will that kiss feel really awkward? That's a sign Absolutely. too, right? Oh, yeah. yes, definitely. Look, you know, you can't fake a kiss if you're not into a kiss. All right, so, uh, okay. Your body, your body tells you, you know. The thing is, when we're aroused, when we're into a kiss or when we're attracted to somebody, our lips are warm, they're plump, mm -hmm. they're soft, 
and there's we have a lot of saliva there's a lot of lubrication if and our bodies are our bodies are quite clearly into it our bodies are moving towards the person when we're not into it our lips are hard our lips are cold because arousal affects not only the temperature but the firmness of our lips it affects our lubrication and saliva and so when somebody to a kiss, they can't fake that they are. Well, they can pretend, but their body, if you're really listening, is going to let you know that something's not quite right. You yeah. just need to listen. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So what would be some kissing turn-ons and turn-offs? Well, we'll start with turn-offs if you <laughs> Okay. The first one is a no-brainer. The first one is bad breath and bad right. teeth. Now, you know, our breath actually... You know, odor and smell is really important in terms of attraction and in kissing and in terms of mate selection because when we're kissing, you know, we're, uh, all five of our senses are relating information on a subconscious level that actually helps us to make a decision as to whether or not we want to date this person or yes. continue a relationship with them. Now, if you have really bad breath, often that can be a sign of something deeper. It might be that you're you're not well, that you're unhealthy, maybe you're on medications, maybe you've got the flu, maybe you're sick. It could be that your diet is lacking. It could be that you have some issues with your gums. But all of these things are communicating information about you. I also advise be smart when you're out. Don't eat onions, right? Because a lot of people are really (laughs) offended by onions. You know, carry little breath things with you. And when you take one, have a glass of water, which helps spreads the the peppermint flavor all through your mouth. Yes, These are absolutely. no-brainer, right? Absolutely. Do that. Yes, what I'm saying, and Liana, you know, this is a thing that people can find really, it could be because of the hormones, medication, whatever it is. There's always something that you can do um, to fix that situation. And so, and a tongue that probes and out or that are the really hard tongue and I don't need to tell you that it's usually men <laughs> mm-hmm. who that I mean definitely talk to your dentist about any issues you're a problem and fix it right just yeah, figure it out yeah absolutely absolutely and um, the next kissing turn off is what you mentioned Rihanna is too much time because I think that your um your dining can't eat now but it's too hard too much tongue and too forceful or don'ts. The, the travesty of international phone calls and connections. I know. We got um, you now, loud and clear. Yes. All right. Wonderful. Hopefully it's safe. And you mentioned, Rihanna, about tongue, about people, particularly in early stages of dating, just going straight in with the tongue. And that's, and that's one of the biggest turnoffs is either yes, I agree. too much <laughs> tongue or, or too forceful with the tongue. And literally sometimes, you know, I, I've had many people complain about the tongue going in and out. <laughs> yes. Which is just, it's just too much. Reason. So we talked a bit about the differences between men and women. But again, really, it is about taking their lead. And guys out there, if you want to be seen as a good kisser, if you want to really connect with your kissing partner or you know, the person that you'd like a relationship with, then it's really about taking it slow because a lot of these things also come from nerves, feeling like you not allowing yourself really the time to bond. Because if we allow ourselves time to bond... It's yeah, true. It takes here. women longer to feel if they want to have you as a partner yes. because, again, we're hardwired for security and that takes time to figure Absolutely. out, do we feel safe with this person, not feel safe? Is If a man's too pushy, that usually pushes a woman right away. Definitely, the kiss should be comfortable for the woman as well. Absolutely. Okay. And, you know, research has shown that in terms of what makes the perfect kiss, um, the kiss that gets you remembered for the right reasons, Actually, a tender, loving touch is something mm-hmm. that wins hands down. So we watch Hollywood movies. Hollywood has a lot to answer for, doesn't it? Yes, that's true. <laughs> and we watch Hollywood movies, and you would think that the most amazing kiss is the French kiss, you know, hot, passionate kiss. But in actual fact, the research tells us that what and what we probably all instantly know within our own hearts is what we crave is tenderness. We crave is that feeling of security, that feeling of love that is actually here for us. 
you know, that tenderness, that nurturing. The last portion we were going to go into is the body language of attraction. There's definitely the law of attraction that Katia did hit on, not mimicking like a puppet, but in a way picking up the same body signals of your partner. You know, if they move close, you can move closer too. If they reach out their hand to touch you, you can do the same thing. So that would be the last part that we're going to touch on is the body language of attraction and what is the body really saying. There's a lot of times that we do misread body language signals, maybe because you're hoping too much this is going to work out or somebody's just nervous. They may like you, but they're just nervous and are afraid to make a move because they like you so much. And then you might go home and say, well, you know, they didn't really kiss me. They don't like me and they do like you. It's awkward in the beginning, you know, a lot of times when people are just getting to know each other. Important thing is just be yourself. Just be outgoing, be confident. You can try something if it doesn't work out. It's no big deal. I usually say for the lady, for the man to take the lead when it comes to kissing, let him read the body language. I do like when Katia said it's a lot of eye contact and just getting closer and softer lips and the lips parting a little bit. Those are some signs that you can watch for. Touching a little bit on Katia, the body language of attraction. If you want to hit on that a little bit. Okay. What I would really love, I think that, you know, we touched a little earlier about the body language of attraction being, you know, increases of proximity, increasing, okay, increasing. But I think the most important thing perhaps, Rihanna, that I can communicate to everyone tonight is that, you know, our bodies shoot off over 10,000 stimuli during every interaction that really do reveal how we truly feel, you know, about the situation and also potentially about the other person. We're pre-wired to read body language. It's actually our first language. And so sometimes the most, the best I can advice I can give you is to slow down and reconnect to yourself and trust your gut. If you actually relearn how to trust your gut instinct rather than getting that sort of thinking or thinking about it too much, mm-hmm. you will be able to know if somebody is attracted to you or not or, or if someone feels uncomfortable because you'll recognize those as the signals that you send out yourself. You know, think to yourself, what do I do when I'm nervous? What do I do when I'm attracted to somebody? And then what will happen is once you build that awareness, you're actually going to see those signals in other people. The beauty of it is, is not only will you see it, you'll actually feel what they're feeling. Because through our nonverbal communication, it actually allows us we mimic other people's expressions and in doing that it's like a sort of a biological reaction physiological biological and emotional we actually can feel those emotions as well and it actually can really help you to connect with the other person and if you can do that you'll instantly become more attractive because people will feel safe around you your body language will let them know that you get them that you understand them and they're going to feel safe and secure around you instantly going to make you more attractive Mm-hmm. Okay. Any other tips you can give for our couples out there where they think maybe they lost the spark? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I think that something that's really interesting, I guess, in terms of the connection, particularly at the moment, we, you know, we're talking in this episode about emotional and physical intimacy. And sometimes for couples, it's just actually about taking the time to reconnect. You know, often we say yes go on a date night or whatever. But often what can happen is we're going through the motions. Mm -hmm. And what we need to actually do is to allow ourselves to reconnect, to bring that love back. So it might be things like, you know, setting yourself a little challenge about, you know, thinking to yourself, you know, even if it's going two days by just thinking, you know, loving thoughts towards your partner. No eye rolling allowed, you know. Maybe it's, what you know, one day every week that you actually just focus your intention on them, that you actually do more for them, that you make it about them or you try and live the day in their shoes from their perspective, what would they want? You know, again, it's about bringing it back at the beginning of a relationship. We don't even think of it's all about the other person. It's all about making them happy. If we can bring just a small amount of that back into it whilst clearing whilst clearly setting our bound, having clear, healthy boundaries and obviously not forgetting what we want and need, then that's actually going to be all we need to rekindle the romance because as soon as your partner feels valued and understood and appreciated, Mm -hmm. the resentment goes down, the physical intimacy goes up, that's repaired 
all on its own. You don't have to do anything else because the two go hand in hand, right? Yes. I always say if there's something that's wrong, talk about it early. Don't let it fester. Don't keep it inside. Everyone will have issues because there's two different individuals in a relationship. You're not going to see eye to eye all the time. And that's perfectly okay. It's all right to say, babe, it's all right. We don't agree on this this time. And that's okay. I love you, you know, and then you laugh and, (laughs) you know, you don't make a big deal of things, you know, take life lighter, be each other's best friend. When you think about your best friend, they'll do a lot of things you don't agree with, but you don't get mad at them. You don't resent them. This is where I say partners should be best friends, buddies, and yet passionate lovers at the same time, because then you're really comfortable. Right. You're comfortable with each Absolutely. each other. But then you're also comfortable I, I, to say, hey, let's go have a fantasy night. Let's dress up in some leather and go role play. You got to keep it fresh and hot. You know, <laughs> Halloween's the best date night of the year. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I think it, I think that's the best date night on of the year for a lot of people, but also, you know, we, we make so many assumptions about our partner, don't we? Particularly, yeah. you know, we assume that they're like us in so many ways and we actually forget sometimes to check in or let them know what we need and want in a relationship to clearly communicate our own boundaries and wants and needs. And then there's this resentment that builds up. But often yes. it's because couples haven't, they're just assuming so much about their partner. They're not communicating what they want. They're not asking their partner. They're too scared perhaps to cross the line. Maybe they don't want to rock the boat. But actually, you're quite right, you know, bringing fun and playfulness into it. And at the end of the day, you know, we don't get out of this alive, do we? I love that quote. So why not have fun with it? You know, when did relationships get so serious? I don't know. Right. You don't want to take it so serious. And life is short and you've got to have fun. I mean, making regular date nights is a must for every relationship every week that Saturday night without miss you know going on that vacation once every two months even if it's a weekend of mm-hmm. night away just going away to reconnect and be positive with each other and you got to keep an eye on your mindset if you're always criticizing yeah. your partner in your head then that's all you're going to see and you say things well they're great because of this 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 and this and you choose to see the beautiful things of that person or you remember why you make a conscious awareness why you fell in love with that person and all the qualities that they have brought to your life and keep visiting that versus finding the picky and stupid things that really don't matter i mean i had a couple in my therapy practice arguing and screaming about how to change a light bulb I'm like, guys, look at yourselves. Are you kidding me? You know, it's like now we know why there's no intimacy because you're fighting over the stupidest things all the time. It's It's kind of a cop out. And you know what's interesting is I love what you said about thinking positive thoughts about your partner. And not only is that really powerful in terms of how you feel and how you act, but from a non-verbal perspective, what you feel comes out to your partner. When you have this resentment, when when you're criticizing your partner in your head and thinking, you stupid jerk, why did you do that? You know, what's wrong with you? They can feel that. They can feel that. They can see it in your face. Absolutely. Absolutely. They feel it. You know, their body is being bombarded with information, with their body language, their facial expressions, the power language, the way that you're saying that is revealing exactly what you're thinking about them. But if we change our thoughts to what your thoughts affect your body language, which affect your emotions, and vice versa. So if you change your thoughts, you change your body language, you change your emotions. Yes. If you yeah. if you change your body language, you can change your emotions. So just by being more open and loving, by touching them, by rather than being there with your arms crossed, actually sitting next to them, putting your hand on you and opening your body language, just that in itself is enough to change how yes. you feel about your partner. You know, all of these little things are so powerful and they really can increase the emotional intimacy and physical intimacy in your relationship and really, you know, get rid of a lot of this negativity, which actually it can build up over time if we allow it to, can't it? Yeah, it will kill the relationship. And this leads us into our last lesson, which is now from the simple principles for a happy and healthy marriage. 
And this is page 69, calling Sparking Romance. Successful marriage requires falling in love many times, always with the same person. Naturally, passion in a marriage will wax and wane, but romance can be just the thing to get the couple through the tough times. Many couples are surprised at how easy it is to be romantic, even after many years together. When both partners strive to be more romantic, you're truly strengthening your partnership and creating a bank of fond sentiment and memories. With so much to do every day, most couples feel more tired than romantic at the end of the day. Mm. However, married males are 14% more likely to prefer a romantic night than unmarried men. To bring romance to the surface of your relationship, let go of any expectations or images of romance you currently hold. Yet, most romantic gestures need not cost a fortune or require extensive planning. Real romance is less about grand gestures and an undying passion and more about small, intimate moments shared by you and your partner. When you want to be romantic, let go of the idea of what you're supposed to do or be other than just relaxing, being yourself and let your partner know you care for them very deeply and what you appreciate about them. Decide to make romance a priority. Remember that opportunities for romance are found even in the most mundane and simple moments and do whatever you can to keep rekindling the fire in your love relationship and marriage. At this point, Katty, I want to thank you so much for being with us tonight and sharing your messages on kissing and thank you for keep calling in and not giving up on us in the <laughs> US <guys> here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did great. Oh, okay, we got to sign off. All thank right. you so much. Thank you, my darling. Okay, thank love you. angels and transformers. Bye. That's all we have time for today. We thank you for tuning in to Lessons in Life and Love. Next week, we will be covering learning to love unconditionally and relationship rules of success. So please tell your friends who you love and care about to join us next week too and I appreciate you sharing the love and helping me change the way the world loves you can reach out and send me your questions at lessons in life and love show at gmail.com or reach out for a free life and love discovery session during the week at rihannamilne.com be sure to join me next week at 6 p.m. eastern time on BBM global network and as always I'm here to help you have the life you desire and the love that you deserve God bless and have a fabulous week and happy Valentine's Valentine's Day. Make your partners feel amazingly special. We want to thank you for joining us on this episode of Lessons in Life and Love with Coach Rihanna Milne. Your personal journey of life and love transformation has only just begun. Go to RihannaMilne.com for more resources. And if you're really ready to take action to improve your life or love situation, apply now for a free life and love transformation discovery session with Rihanna, a $500 value. Just contact Rihanna with your questions and to tell her your story at RihannaMilne.com. And remember, it's time to have the life you desire and the love you deserve.